Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. March 31, 2020, the Let Them Eat Cake edition. And we start off with that as our lead story from Chris Tomlinson over at the Houston Chronicle. He says corporate CEOs should go without pay until their employees' jobs are secure. He goes through and talks about the corporate uh, CEOs who have laid off literally hundreds of thousands of employees but uh, haven't seen fit to take a pay cut. And that's why they deserve, they claim, to be paid 221 times more than the average employee. He says it would be a uh, very good effort. He does note that uh, some CEOs have uh, stopped collecting their base pay. He pointed to United Airlines Chief Executive Officer Oscar Munoz and President Scott Kirby. He also said that uh, Southwest Airlines... Um, CEO took a 10% pay cut off of his $750,000 salary, so uh, his $75,000 pittance uh, will really not go anywhere. Uh, Within the energy industry, uh, things are obviously much, much worse, Uh, and we've got Halliburton, for instance, who laid off 3,500 employees for 60 days, yet did not seem uh, CEOs um, haven't really... uh, said anything about cutting their salaries, which could save, of course, jobs. So uh, Tomlinson says CEOs need to lead from the front. They're obviously making uh, over 200 times what uh, their employees are and that they need to do something positive in this. Next up, from the Wall Street Journal, the Justice Department is investigating lawmakers for possible insider trading. The four lawmakers who sold stock immediately after the uh, national security briefing in February um, are now under investigation from the Justice Department uh, for uh, insider trading. As part of that inquiry, the uh, FBI has reached out to uh, certain senators who sold their stock immediately after being informed of the uh, a danger of the coronavirus crisis. So the senator said, of course, they've done nothing wrong. It was all coincidence, misunderstanding, uh, but uh, now the FBI is involved. Uh, Matt Kelly over at Radical Compliance reports to us that a whistleblower award has been made by the Securities and Exchange Commission to a compliance professional. Uh, this compliance professional uh, turned in the information to his or her company And they did not do anything for 120 days, and so he turned it over to the SEC. Uh, Interestingly, the whistleblower uh, did not institute the or instigate the SEC investigation. Nevertheless, the SEC said, although the source of the investigation, not the source of the investigation, rather, claim its information was significant, that it refocused the investigation on the violations that were ultimately charged. So very unusual for a CCO type or compliance officer to turn in a company, but here we had it. And finally, from Vice, we have a really interesting story about GE workers who are going on strike against their company for the company's refusal to uh, manufacture ventilators. Uh, Not only would this uh, manufacturing of ventilators obviously help in this corona health crisis, but it would help give these GE workers uh, work to do and keep the company doors open. So when was the last time you ever heard uh, workers go on strike to work? Uh, Frankly, I've never heard of that. So let's hope that GE uh, retools and begins to make ventilators. They're certainly needed now, and the workers obviously need the work. The government's guaranteeing payment, so I don't know why GE would uh, refuse to work. I am proud to announce a new podcast premiering this week on the Compliance Podcast Network. It's Compliance and Coronavirus. I wanted to bring some clarity and sanity to the compliance practitioner around coronavirus. So for the next foreseeable future, at least eight weeks, I'll be podcasting Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of each week on a topic related to coronavirus, COVID-19. Check it out with the Daily Compliance News.